ستړي ما شای خود دو کی چی خواهی جور وای رو وای تکرا وای سهد کی وای مینا محبات کی وای دستای کی وای ایت پکای کی وای زیتا سیفتی گر ککای دلتا حکتا پا جی دی اوشام می لٹا کو بلکی دیر خولا میر دا دیر خولی آو دو او نن دستا موسیقی دیر خاص او ما دو ما خونا دا خپل وطن دور دا دا خپل وطن سرائی دا من تو سی خو مسافر تیار طول مسافر دیو ای دو دنیو زا خو مسافر رنیم پو دا دنیو زا گرد دنیو که خپل وطن کیم لیکن نن موسیقی دیر خاص دوستا so we will switch to English because we want everybody to understand. So I'm here with someone very special and and I will have him introduce himself to you. So voila! Oh, salam. Hi. How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm good. How are you? Welcome to Kabul, Afghanistan. Welcome back. Welcome back. Yeah, my third trip. So it's so nice to be here. Thank you for being. It's so good to see. Such a kind host and showing us so much of stuff that I haven't seen already, and not just in Kabul but Afghanistan. Yes, it's so good to have you. Yeah. I know we've been in contact for a very long time. Yeah, over the internet. Yes, because your Baba John, may Allah rest his soul in peace. Nabi Kaka introduced us. That's right. And we've been in contact ever since. Uh, I'm so happy you could come. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I so absolutely love the work you do, so I really want to talk about the work you do. I want to ask you so many questions, mm. but why don't you introduce yourself to me? Well, uh, I'm, who am I? I mean, I'm, I don't know. I'm happy to be here with you. I'm an artist. I come from um, Afghanistan like you. Uh, my father is from um, Zazi, Zazi tribe, yes. you know, from Pakia province, and um, my brother and I, uh, my mother, the two siblings, were, yeah, just me and my brother, were raised in England. Okay. So in London, and we came to uh, America, but my father worked for the BBC uh, pastoral service. He was always very active in uh -huh. things of Afghanistan, which is, I think, how you met him when you first came. Yes. Here. Uh, from the West, so we both kind of have that in common that we're both coming from the West, mm -hmm. uh, you and I, but um, you've been here for, I think, four or five years. And our now. father's a legend. Uh, yeah, <laughs> sure, yes, definitely. <laughs> definitely, yeah. So, um, so yeah, I don't know, I think it's it's beautiful to come in contact with you. I didn't, you know, I think our, you had met my father um, before he mentioned you to me. So it was only after he passed that I saw on Facebook, you know, you have a huge following of thousands and thousands of Afghans and people all over the world, said, who is this lady with a video, you know, you were interviewing my dad or you were talking to my dad on Facebook or something. Yeah. That's when I first actually saw you, um, it was after he passed. And I said, well, what's going on here? And then I, we got in touch and yeah. we were telling you some, some naughty stories. Making condolences. Yeah, of course. Because you Westerners are a bit far from Afghanistan. Oh, well, yeah, the time, time, <laughs> time difference. Yeah, my brother was just telling me yesterday, my older brother Omar, he was saying how lucky I am that I've been here three times. And he was reminding me that there are so many Afghans that, you know, which was me yeah. until 10 years ago, that want to come here. Yes, I don't believe... make it or can't or don't. Exactly. It's not easy. I have a lot of friends that are actually moving back to Afghanistan. They uh -huh. have finished their schools and they have. Uh, made decisions to return to Afghanistan because the, I've always, uh, you know, I was a year old too. You were born in England, right? Yeah, in the Dalai Lama. And was... how long have you lived in all your lifetime in Afghanistan? I've never lived here. I've just visited here three times. So. And how much, how long were each your time? I mean, weeks at a time, maybe three uh, weeks. Okay, so know. maximum you probably spent a month in Afghanistan. Maybe, maybe two months, yeah. Two months. Yeah. So. I was also a year old when my family migrated from Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah. So you were born here, though? I was born in Kabul in, as well. In Kabul, okay. Yeah. And, then, and I'm 40 today, and it's been four years and three months that I'm in Afghanistan now. Yeah. <coughs> and I don't see ever going back. Yeah. See, see, I was a year old. I didn't have any willpower. I didn't have a choice. I didn't know. So my father, my parents made a decision for me, and yeah. we booked it. Yeah. But now that I understand, I feel that it is very important for our generation to, you know, we don't want to be, you know, there's a joke, what's the difference between an immigrant and an uh, EI? AI. AI. Oh, what's the difference? Yeah, we surely went home. ET. Yeah, oh, ET, ET, okay, ET. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, what's sorry, the difference? Sorry, sorry. 
Because he did make sure he went home. Yeah. We just go there, and I feel like we should take the opportunities. Wow, that's good. I've never heard of that. <laughs> I think we should take the opportunities. Yeah. To learn. Yeah. But, but and learn and come back and bring those opportunities to Afghanistan. Use developed and progress communities, societies as an inspiration, yeah. and bring it to her. not just go there and forget everything we ever. Because I've been, I need you here. I want you to be in Afghanistan. Yeah. Especially I mean, with the work you do. It's so needed. Well, Afghanistan. listen, my, my dad's last project that he was doing, he used to work for the previous administration. So it was a, one of his big projects. It never took off because of all the corruption that was going yeah. on in the previous administration. Um, it was very hard for him to take this idea off, but it was called, um, you know, he was so excited about it. It was called, he, he was saying, there's a brain drain. Everyone's leaving. And this is, you know, when things were relatively, according to the rest of the world, Good, you know. 10, he, he, 10 years that's ago. one of the reason I was so close to him because he was he was he had an amazing, not with that realistic approach on things. And yeah, he, so he was yeah. putting this proposal together to incentivize people to come back to the country, to return home, to return home. We'll pay your salary. You know, all the respected professors who are yeah. now uh, living in exile in Germany, in America, in England, mm -hmm. whatever. He was trying to bring them back, and he thought, okay, if we do it professionally with the government funding and yeah. with salary, it'll be a wonderful thing. Exactly. Uh, you know, he never even got the idea, to, get, didn't get to take off the, uh, didn't get off the ground because of all that, like I said, there was a lot of um, just bureau bureaucracy, mm -hmm. and it's mostly just bureaucracy, you know, we can call it corruption, but really the line between bureaucracy and corruption in these kinds of governments. What do you is, mean when you say bureaucracy? Bureaucracy, like red, ta red, <laughs> rah, rah. <laughs> red tape, uh, they call it red tape in the West, like lots of rules, regulations, form, uh, you know, things that stop you from just getting simple things done. Which is one of the beautiful things that is that it exists in Afghanistan that I see every time I come here, is that there isn't that much of that generally. But in the in the previous government there was, which is you so can't do you this. So you mean like you're taping? You, you can't do. You can't go here without a form. You can't go there without uh, this permission. Just you more can't control. Speak, yeah, control power. Basically. Micromanaging power. Micromanaging, yeah. yeah. But people yeah. usually yeah. gatekeeping for reasons of power. That's a but, failed leadership, and I think we yeah. realize it. And yeah. We're realizing it around the world. And it's happening around the world for sure. Yeah. People are looking at democracies now in a very different way than we did when we were growing up. When it was like democracy is the only best thing. No, the greatest thing. Yeah. People are seeing it now because of what's happening. I mean, I'm seeing it in America. Uh -huh. it's, it's a huge. I mean, democracy has become just this word, yeah. and it's become such a corrupt thing. Yeah, it's Americans, exploited. The word it's exploited. exploited. Yeah, and it is exploited <coughs> by its nature, by the definition of democracy. Tell me, how was your experience in Afghanistan? This time, you love politics. Yeah. I don't love politics, but it's there. <laughs> I was born in it, you know. Yeah, I hate it, actually. Yeah, but, but tell me, how do you feel uh, being in Afghanistan? Yeah, I believe you're here in this new government, first time in this government. Yeah, well, I don't know. I, I don't think of it as government. You know, I'm an artist, so I didn't say that to the people at the beginning, but I'm an artist. So I look at things in terms of just my feeling. Yeah. So my feeling before I came here, I think I told you, told you this, was that everybody who I knew, family or friends, Afghans uh -huh. in the West, uh -huh. who were visiting, and some of them did, you know. Yeah. I have an uncle, a couple of uncles who went, distant uncles, uncles, mm -hmm. um, and they came back and they were telling me what they thought. And I listen, that's what I do. I try, I try not to talk too much. Yeah, I, listen, I know right? that. That's a very nice way. So, okay, what are they saying? And they were telling me, like, well, it was pretty nice. It was, it was. That good memories. Those that are already living the, in the no, West that came, they to, came visit to visit and they and told then me returned. about the visit. They brought yeah. good memories. Yeah, well, they're not just good memories, they brought me good news. They said it's safe, it's, it's nice. You know, you obviously, you have to be a little respectful of some of the changes now yeah. so there's no blasting like yeah. music from the shop fronts and stuff which you know women are not getting harassed as much but there's also that there's the safe that's yeah. what they mean by safety because they went with their wives okay. so they were talking about the safety aspect yeah. for women mostly <laughs> and men feel safe most of the places yeah you know. <laughs> Fortunately, um, but for women they were talking about so so what's the experience of the people that are already living there and have not come to Afghanistan? What are they saying? Oh, well, that's the other side. So there's uh, So that's what I was saying about coming here mm -hmm. There was a difference between the people that I've met who were coming here and mm -hmm. telling me these things like yeah, it's that come and witnessed yeah, that, yeah, it's okay. It's nice. It's safe. It's pretty cool. It was nice It was fun. Whatever they had they had mm -hmm. pretty much good things to say Yeah, and then the people that and then there are two other groups in the West. It's yeah. it's the media, which, which includes Afghan diaspora media. Of course. Right? And then there is also people who, you know, um, 
I don't like. I don't know how to put this, and I want to be. You can be as blunt as you want. This yeah. is an open space, a uh, safe space. Blunt space. And everyone that's watching, we have. A, they understand that here. There's no formality. Sure, sure. So I mean, we're not, home. They, we're home. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> it's nothing. Um, no, it's nothing disrespectful. It's to say that I noticed that people who, in my opinion, um, don't look like they ever really want to come back. You I know see. what I mean? Okay. There are a lot of people who, and I understand this 100%, so I'm not judging. There are a lot of people who are comfortable in the West and yeah. they don't really want to come back, but they're still Afghan and so they feel obligated to talk about it. And of course, they still care about their, their motherland, but I can pretty much sense from these people that they're not really invested in, in coming back in any way, which is, which that's is fine. their decision. Good for you. But those people and the media tend to have the worst things to say. Yeah, so if, if I, I actually so I agree with you yeah. 100%. There's, there's, there's another side. There's those, I, I love how you put it together, <coughs> that have no intention of ever coming, mm. but they will come back right. eventually because the children mm. will grow up. And mm. I think it is important to know where we come from. We need to we need to look for our history. I had to do that. I went around Europe, Spain, Mexico, trying to find girls that look like me right. or resembled me. And, find yourself. And yeah. why I felt like an alien, ET, you know, yeah, in me Canada. Too. Me too. You understand? Yeah. So my parents are still living in Canada and I don't think they will ever come here. They'll come visit, mm -hmm. but they will retire there and they're living there. We've been there for many, many, many years. In Canada, yeah. Yeah, but I, as the daughter, just um, made. Um, uh, and <laughs> so I'm an astonished big guy. <laughs> so I made the decision to come, yeah. and I'll be very honest. My, a lot of my family members were not for it; they thought I'll die. But the point is, yeah. these children will eventually ask their parents who we are, where we are, why did we come here, and if we come. And these members that I made a decision to stay there, but I also feel like some of these people that are there because they've made these. A lot of them did not have that many problems. Yeah. They made these big problems to get the status or get themselves evacuated. It's and true, now true. it's like they will carry on this, this negative, this, this bad karma they've created that it was so bad I was dying, yeah. and, and and I had to come. And the second one is people that have never been here. Yeah. They watch CNN and BBC and they have an opinion about a one stuff. Yeah, what do you think about those people? I don't, I mean, I don't respect people who spread bad news negativity. in general. Negativity. Is yes. I don't respect Don't that do in, it. Don't do it. Yeah, just like drugs. Don't be a vampire. Don't be a mosquito. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that I don't like. And I don't care whether it's, you know, I was looking at some old posts from COVID time uh, on Instagram, looking at stuff that um, was from two, three, four, five years ago. Just yeah. And I remember uh, I saw one of my posts. It said more people are dying from fear than COVID. And I think. Oh my that, God, you're right. Right, and that was in 2020. I was thinking, feeling that when I was just feeling the atmosphere in America, yeah. right? And so I'm just allergic to that negativity in general. Yeah. It gets under my skin, and I'm like, well, you know, why don't you offer something constructive? And that's why I love yeah. what you're doing here. Is that Thank you, you. you know you've invested yourself here. It doesn't, you know, it's like you're saying that people were scared that you're gonna die and everything or get killed or, or be get killed. kidnapped okay but that sounds a little far-fetched when you're here and it's grounded and you see Thank how you. wonderful people are yeah at the same time though i acknowledge that it is like it is brave and it is listen we are for people that come from the west mm. people don't say this enough uh, as afghans you're, you're from canada originally i'm from well you're coming from canada i was coming from england and living in america I love canada now yeah what do you, is in england nice for canada let's say canada uh, my Canada there is cold, but so is <laughs> <laughs> that's, I only think about things in terms of cold and heat. And heat. Oh, Canada that's why is I mean, beautiful. That's, that's why I'm where I am now. I'm somewhere warm. But um, no, but what I'm saying is, even to us, we intake some of this, uh, let's call it propaganda. Yeah. It's there in us. Maybe it's Probably just one percent, but yeah. it's there. So it, re it requires courage for me every time I come here, because mm -hmm. I still think, of course, there's a chance. Yeah, something could happen. Hundred percent. Like Afghanistan anywhere is, in the world. Yeah, like anywhere in the world. You can be in a lot of places in the West in the ghettos. Oh, well, listen! I was in Honduras once, and I took a wrong turning in um, in uh, Honduras, and I was in this dark neighborhood, and this guy came up to me with clearly, you know, you can feel sometimes when things don't feel yeah. safe, you know. Especially you, some tutor. Intuitive, yeah, and you know, and it happened once this yeah. time in Kabul. It's not like Kabul is a perfect no. uh, thing. We had some situations. Yeah, we won't talk about that yet. There's work to do. No, I mean nothing that bad. It's just <coughs> sometimes you run into the wrong person who's having yeah. a bad day. That's as simple but as that. But this is what I'm saying, Yusuf John. Yeah. That there's good, bad, and ugly everywhere. Everywhere, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I feel that it is time now that we not just focus on only the bad of Afghanistan. 
Definitely. I feel like the energy, the, whether it's through media, this, the, it's like there's a determination to uh, put this Afghanistan in the darkest image. And I what feel, did they say a few days ago? The most miserable country in the world. Yeah, but no, I know what poor. Is that? Afghanistan right. people are not poor. The country is not poor. Otherwise, nobody would be coming here. Mm -hmm. It's broken. I always yeah. say Afghanistan is not poor. It's been broken. If I beat you up for forty-five years, for example, mm -hmm. twenty-one years, mm -hmm. and use religion, culture, anything that you have a little bit of value for against you, and break your foundation, deprive you from food, and turn your own against you, and then expect you to be on top of the game. I just feel like Afghanistan is like it's set up for failure through the whole world, especially everything that's happening now in, in, in the media with the sanction. Yeah. How can you, it's like a husband and wife are broken up, Afghanistan is like Manor Moro and everybody wants to be part of her, but they don't want to acknowledge and honor her, the, the power, the light that she is. That's how oh, I feel. And now that yeah. the breaking up has happened, the opposite side is determined to make her look the worst and I'm, yeah, yeah. that's how I feel. It feels unfair and I agree with it's you. It's not right. That's how I felt right after the evacuations. I was saying to my friend at the time, um, a good friend of mine, I was saying, why is everyone focused on the evacuees? Which is fine, of course, yeah. good, God bless them. so them. much bad energy. Yeah, but it was this weird thing where it was like everybody was ignoring an entire nation Thank you. at the expense of like a yeah. couple of hundred thousand people I was getting here. out. You were here. I was here. And you didn't leave, which I was Absolutely like, not. you know, it was made me respect you so much for the fact that you wanted to be here and serve your people. But it's like, what are they, as a media observer and a former yeah. journalist, and you know, my dad was a journalist all his life, so I grew up in this world. Yeah. I look at, my dad taught me to look at the news skeptically. He would, oh, yeah. he would always watch TV about Afghanistan in the, in the Russian era. Yeah. And he would talk back constantly to the reporter. No one would heard, heard him except me, but yeah. he was like pointing out what they're not saying. Yeah. And so what I'm watching that there's stuff, a setup. There's yeah. a setup. Like yeah. why are they trying to make us feel this heaviness? Why are they trying to make us feel this sort of uh, hopelessness about our country? Yeah. Like they're inter the world is interested in Afghanistan. Yeah, they have But a, you're coming from a space of no, you want to come, just come eat our food, right. come check our clothes, get to know us. Right. We're the best of the best. We're not the best. We will not be at the tip of your mouth. We're right. always... Why are you saying all this stuff? <laughs> right, right, right. So many questions. What's the agenda? But I always have a question. What was everybody doing for 21 years? Why did anybody even come? That's my question. You mean in the previous... In 21 years yeah. ago. What yeah. were you all thinking? Since 9-11. Yes. Yeah. What, what went down? Because I go to a lot the rural areas and I see the destruction that has happened and I see all these widows and all these orphans, people that had nothing to do with anything, that have been completely destroyed. And no one has come back to apologize because there was a lot of war crime that took place. Mm. So I'm like, what was everybody doing? Don't you ever wonder? Yeah. Well, I- It's this, a question. I, I, rem I kind of have an answer for it and it's just, a, let me put the answer in the form of one memory that I have when I used to yeah. work at the Afghan embassy in Washington, D.C. Um, it's my first couple of months there. Yeah. We was there was some big function. Everyone was yeah. like, "Okay, you have to get ready. This is a big uh, deal." Uh, I didn't know. I was a young guy working yeah. at the embassy, and then I, I, next thing I know, I'm wearing this suit, feeling uncomfortable. All these fancy people everywhere. Waiters with a tie. Around. Yeah, I don't Chain. know. Chain tie, whatever. Made I hate, out of cloth. I hate the ties. <laughs> I don't think I wore a tie, but whatever I did, it was not comfortable. And I'm watching all these people and the waiters going around with fancy food, and I just was kind of watching it as I usually do. Yeah and not really talking and then this one guy came up to me he, i guess didn't have anyone to talk to big american guy you know older guy uh -huh. kind of loud and well what are you doing here and he <laughs> used to talk to me and i said well i, I kind of work here you know and i said what about you and he says he just looked over at me and he was so proud of himself and happy he says oh we're in uh, we're in weapons manufacturing we're oh. in helicopters and he was just listing his resume to me so proud of himself and I looked at him and I had this moment like, first of all, what am I doing here? This is the kind of crowd that yeah. I'm having to be around. And second of all, like, why is this man not ashamed of the fact that he's, uh, why, is he, why, why is he not ashamed of the fact that he's here? But it, it was clearly, you know, there's, there's been a disconnect and this, this, this has been happening for a long time. So the, that was during this 21 years that you're talking about. They're plugged in, they're not connected. S yeah, oh, totally. Very yeah. plugged in. Very, very plugged in. That was in. deep. You're plugged in but not connected. It's beautiful. <laughs> I mean, that's really good. So yeah, that's what's been going on. It's yeah. people making money for themselves. That's what's been happening. So you're saying that yeah, like war is it money? It is. I mean, yeah. that's the basis. I, yeah, there's so. But at the end of the, regardless, I'm yeah. always curious when I go to these dinners and these events. I'm very curious. I'm like, why is everybody here? Mm. 
What? <laughs> what do you all want from a friend? And you and, and you want to be here, but then you keep saying all these negative things. So if we're not good, leave me. It's like you've broken yes, up, right. you've left. Bye bye. Stop talking about us. Yeah. Stop talking about me. You don't like me. I'm not good enough. Bye bye. Yeah. But you still continue to talk about me, and you're going around telling your other neighbors she's not good. She's not good. My yeah. son is not good. They're bad. Uh, bad, yeah. What were you even doing? We didn't come to you. Abhans, Abhans didn't go to. Have you seen Abhans take over our estates? We love. We have everything. Well, that's that's the beautiful it's thing. It. That's what maybe is so annoying. We bring diversity. Right. We when bring I... language. We bring food. Color and joyfulness. And beauty. Yeah. And right. grace. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to John. We have to cut this short. I love speaking to you. Can we please continue this later yeah. afternoon? Let's do it again. Yeah, I'll look forward to because, it. Because uh, we had a little incident. I want to talk about it. Oh, sure. But when we come back. Okay. Listen, I have to go for a meeting. Yusuf Jan, I'm so happy to speak to you. Surely. Thank okay. you so much for being here. Sure. For bringing Noor to my event. And, and you. Thank you so much. And yeah. for coming. I'm always excited to see brothers like you come to from far, far away. Yeah. Come home and, 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 and want to see things with your own eyes. That's sure. as a... As a uh, people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our haq and that's our given that we must seek um, we must seek uh, and direct experience not, yeah. from, not from hearsay yeah. Yeah, don't yeah. be a puppet to a sister mm. okay <laughs> see you later good. alligators Thanks banana Yusuf Jama um, banana banana okay we're gonna exit <laughs>